Today we're going to talk all about neon watercolors. If you're looking to add a pop of color to your illustration, then you're in the right place. First, let's talk about what neon pigments are and how they work. Neon watercolors have been around for a while, since it was first invented by Bob Switzer in the 1930s, and they've recently gained popularity in the art community in a big way. Compared to standard watercolors, neon watercolors are made with a fluorescent pigment that gives off the appearance of a glowing effect. The way that it works is normal colors absorb and re-emit a portion of the visible spectrum that matches its principal wavelengths. The term fluorescent refers to colors that reflect more light than they absorb. Neon colors normally glow under ultraviolet light as well. This is because fluorescent colors absorb and convert light energy of the dominant wavelength, but also the wavelength of ultraviolet rays and other colors are lower in the visible spectrum. Because of this combination, your eyes view fluorescent colors far more intensely, almost as if they're glowing right in front of you. Some of these colors have the ability to store light for short periods of time, allowing them to actually glow in the dark. Afterglow Yellow is the only color in this neon collection that has the ability to charge and store light to then later glow. You can control the intensity of the glow by diluting with water or layering to full strength. As we create the swatch chart, I'll talk more in depth about this neon set in particular. Some of the information may apply to other neon watercolor paints also. All of the neon colors in the Fintech line are dye-based, meaning they have a type of transparent pigment that is colored with a phosphorescence dye. This means they are also unfortunately fugitive and will fade over time. They have a very low light-fast rating of pore, which means that they will look only this vibrant under museum conditions for less than 10 years. Keep that in mind when creating illustrations with these neon watercolors, they are more suitable to things in the sketchbook that won't see a lot of sunlight, or for illustrations that are going to be scanned and then used digitally in some way. With any of these specialty colors, it's hard to capture their unique effects through the camera, so hopefully you can see their liquid highlighter appearance. Despite their light fast rating, these are still considered a premium professional grade paint. They are single pigmented, and because of their gum arabic binder, they mix beautifully with other water-based supplies. Perfect for mixed media artists. Alright, so now that we're all caught up on the who, what, why of neon paints, let's create a mixed media illustration to really showcase these neon colors. I'll discuss how to balance the neon colors with your standard watercolors to create a cohesive and visually appealing mixed media illustration. If you're curious about any of their supplies that I'm using in this video, I'll have them all linked in the description below. After completing my sketch, I always use a water mister to wet my paints before I begin. I'm using a set of traditional 12 watercolor paints in conjunction with the neons. You'll see me dipping into the neon and mixing it with the standard watercolor to put some neon throughout the skin tone. This will help make the illustration more cohesive overall. If I just use the neon on the hair, then my painting probably won't have very good harmony, so I'm trying to find places throughout the skin where I can kind of mix and match those two types of colors together. Due to the gum arabic binder of the Fine Tech paint, they are very compatible with the traditional watercolors. They mix and work the exact same way. So I'm just using both of them all throughout because I'm trying to be aware of how my painting is going to look once it has the UV light over it as well. The most important thing that I'm keeping in mind is that I want a full range of value. I want really dark blacks so that my neons pop. And you'll see me going back through the painting and really darkening up my midtones. I want those neons to stand out and it's important to have that contrast of the black and darker colors to make that really saturated color just pop off of the surface. Acrylic ink in titanium white and oxide black is a great way to add that really dramatic contrast to your illustration, and it's also water-based, so it's compatible with watercolors the neon paints can be diluted with water to have a more subtle effect. 
They don't have to be used at the full neon strength as they appear in the pans. The more water you add, the more diluted and subtle they can become. So even if you don't want to use it in its full strength in some places, just remember how transparent it is and just add extra water to give it a glazing effect. You'll see at this point that I started to add some colored pencils into the painting. Um, these are watercolored pencils. I use an assortment of different brands, but I found that my illustration just needed a little bit more refining on some of the edges, and watercolor pencils are a great way to do that because you can choose exactly where you want to place them and then use a wet brush to blend them out. So I didn't actually end up using that many really bright neon colored pencils. All the neon tones you see in this painting are the fine tech paints. A really cool thing that you can do is use white colored pencils or that white acrylic ink and place down a new highlight and then you're going to just chase it with that neon pigment right over top and it will create a neon highlight. So kind of a fun thing to do in an area that needs a little bit of an extra highlight as opposed to just doing a standard white highlight. Because the neon pigments are so transparent, I find myself layering them quite a bit. If you want them to look super neon, all you have to do is just add a little bit of water and do a very transparent wash. It's the colors around it that will really enhance that neon effect. So in the areas that I wanted a little bit more shadow, I dip into those neon paints and build them up a little bit more. But for those neon tips um, of her hair and also in her bangs, that's just essentially one wash of neon and I've just painted around it to give it that highlighted neon glowing effect. Overall, I really enjoy neon paints. I think that they're a great addition to a standard watercolor set or watercolor collection. If you've never tried them, I definitely recommend it. Uh, the only thing to keep in mind is that they are fugitive. They don't last very long in natural light, so if you're creating the illustration for something that's going to be scanned um, or used digitally, then it's a really great option. I find myself using neons to enhance the saturation of my standard watercolor illustrations all the time. Before I say goodbye, I did want to show some final shots of the illustration underneath the UV light and also what it looks like glowing in the dark. Hope you guys enjoyed this video and learned something new about neon watercolors. Thank you for watching and I hope that you have a wonderful week.